So last week I travelled to Cologne in Germany to check out some of the most highly anticipated upcoming VR games, try out some crazy new tech and consume my own body weight in currywurst and wiener schnitzel. That's right, I headed to Gamescom, one of the world's biggest gaming events with over 300,000 attendees. In this video I'll take you on a journey around the event, giving you my hands-on first impressions of everything I got to try on the show floor, along with sharing my personal highlight of the show at the very end of the video. Before we jump in though, I want to say a big thank you to Skydance Interactive for sponsoring this video, as covering the event just wouldn't have been possible without them. So let's kick this off with the game that they were showing this year called Arashi Castles of Sin Final Cut. This is a game that originally released on PSVR way back in August of 2021, but sadly it didn't get that much attention back then as it released kind of late in the original PSVR's life cycle. But the developers Endeavor One along with Skydance Interactive have been working hard to remaster this title with updated graphics, new enemies and new controls to bring it to Quest 2, Quest 3, PSVR 2 and PC VR headsets via Steam later this year. In Arashi, you take the role of Kenshiro, a deadly shinobi assassin on a quest for justice with your faithful wolf companion Haru by your side. In the 30 minute demo I played on PSVR 2, I was tasked with sneaking my way through a village at night and into an enemy compound. You can choose if you want to play stealthy by hiding in the shadows to pick off your foes one by one, or you can go all out swinging your swords like a complete maniac. It's completely up to you. What I really liked was being able to command Haru to pin down an enemy whilst I came in to finish them off with my swords. And then of course, giving Haru a big old fuss as a reward afterwards. I also had a couple of other tools at my disposal, such as a grappling hook to reach high areas to move around undetected, and a bow to take out guards silently. The demo ended with a pretty intense boss fight with this menacing looking samurai warrior. With all the sword based combat encounters, my only gripe is that you have to block the incoming attacks first and then quickly counter them to land a successful blow, otherwise you can't deal any damage to the enemies. I guess this is to prevent you from just rolling in and waving your sword around like a feather duster and taking everyone out with ease. Overall though, I was left impressed with Arashi and I look forward to exploring this title more when it launches later this year. Moving on from waving swords around to waving power washers around in Power Wash Simulator VR. Now, from the second I saw Power Wash Simulator back in the dark days of COVID in 2021, I knew this would be the perfect candidate for VR support. And here we are. Now you can take full control of the power washer with one-to-one -one motion controls in VR, instead of having to use thumbsticks or a mouse to clean, which makes the game so much more fun in my opinion. I know some people will be rolling their eyes right now, but it's so oddly satisfying and relaxing to play. Just turn off your brain, forget your troubles in life and get on with cleaning some dirty pavements, signs and cars with your pressure washer. In my demo, I got to work cleaning a huge mini golf course, which no doubt would take many, many hours to finish. While we didn't get to try it out during our demo, on release you'll be able to team up with a friend in online co-op mode to tackle the dirt and grime together. This is coming to both Quest 2 and Quest 3 later this year. Sadly, there's no word on it releasing on other platforms just yet. Talking about platforms, here's something you don't see very often and that's a new VR platforming game. It's a genre in VR that's often overlooked, but we've had some really great examples of VR platformers working well in the past, with titles such as Lucky's Tale, Moss and Astrobot. This charming new platformer is called Max Mustard and it's from Australian developers Toast Interactive the same team behind the viral hit Richie's Plank Experience. In this game, you take control of Max in the yellow jumpsuit, who can jump, hover with her jet boots, and deal damage to enemies with a spin kick attack. Sometimes you, the player, are equipped with items that can be used to help Max on her journey, like using this plunger gun to drop the explosive boxes to clear her path, for example. Hidden throughout each stage are three adorable trapped mud pups that you have to set free along with picking up coins and collecting mustard letters. I really enjoyed my time with this demo. It's a fun, relaxed platformer that the whole family can enjoy, and it will be available on Quest 2 and Quest 3 early next year. Going from something super cute and cheerful to something super intense and straight up painful, I got to check out this haptic vest from a company called Owo. 
You may have heard of this company as recently they announced they're going to be partnering with Ubisoft to bring an Assassin's Creed Mirage branded vest to the market. Now, unlike other haptic vests like B Haptics that uses a series of rumble motors, Owo is a skin tight vest that uses conductive pads along the major muscle groups in your upper body to provide a range of haptic feedback sensations. During the calibration process, I felt shocks to my muscle to establish my pain tolerance, and then some basic sensations like a ball being thrown at me and the feeling of mosquitoes biting me all over my body. And then this is where things got super weird. I felt a gunshot sensation where I could feel the bullet enter my chest, exit my back, and then I could feel the blood drip down from the wound. It was pretty insane, and I'm not saying that in a good way. I also got to experience a knife to the gut where once the knife was inside, it was twisted around. Both of these experiences were quite frankly unpleasant and I would describe the feeling as an intense electrical shock. It kind of feels similar to using one of those electrical ab workout belts, but much more precise. The crazy thing is that the vest was only running at around 20% power. I can't even imagine what it would feel like at 80%, which is as high as the vest can go. What's concerning is that anyone at home could crank this vest up to the max and essentially taser themselves, which is of course incredibly dangerous. And I've actually seen a video of a demo go very wrong with a friend of mine who actually collapsed as a result of the vest power being put up too high. Overall, I found the vest itself to be pretty uncomfortable as it needs to be skin tight for the conductive pads to work. Also, the pads themselves are made from a jelly-like material that would need to be replaced every few months when you clean the vest itself. Haptics and VR work incredibly well together, and even a small amount of haptic feedback can really enhance the overall VR experience. But this is a product I just can't recommend. I've experimented myself with adding real paint to VR in the past with this insane paintball rig that shot me every time I got shot in game. And while it was probably the most intense gaming experience I've ever had in my life, it certainly isn't something I'd want to put myself through again. So if I had to choose a VR haptic vest right now, I would choose B Haptics over the OO every single time. I much prefer the feeling of the rumble motors over these small painful electric shocks. Woo. Moving on from crazy hardware back to VR games, and although I didn't try this one out on the show floor, I played this demo just before I left home and I enjoyed it so much that I wanted to include it in this roundup video, and that's the seventh guest VR. If you're not familiar with the franchise, the original game launched on PC CD-ROM way back in the early 90s, and VR developers Vertigo Games have brought the game back to life and fully remade it from the ground up for virtual reality. In the game, you play as a ghostly spirit entering the creepy mansion of Henry Stauff. He's a toy maker with a shady past whose toys have been killing off children that play with them. It's a super creepy story. In the mansion, you'll see visions of other guests in the form of this clever volumetric capture, meaning that you can freely walk around these lifelike visions, which is incredibly cool when you get to experience it for yourself. You get to use this lantern to manipulate objects around you, and this is particularly well done when you use it on the various paintings dotted around the mansion. In the room that I played, I was solving puzzles with a magic hat that were really clever and rewarding in their design. With the full game boasting many more rooms to explore, this game is at the top of my most anticipated VR games list right now. And if you love VR puzzle games, you owe it to yourself to check this one out. The seventh guest, VR, will be launching on Quest 2, Quest 3, PSVR 2, and Steam on the 19th of October. Before I move on to my VR highlight of the show, I just wanted to show you this picture that honestly made the entire trip. GT and I ran after this guy across one of the convention halls just to grab this snap of him. So if you know who this guy is, then let me know in the comments down below. So now onto my VR highlight of the show, which came as a complete surprise to me. If you follow me on social media, you'll know that one of the games I've always wanted to play in VR is Dead Space. I absolutely loved the original game and the recent remaster, and I hope one day we do get an official VR port. But until that happens, this is the closest VR game I've played that gives me those original Dead Space vibes. This is a game called Memoriam from Patient 8 Games. They're a team of passionate VR enthusiasts that previously worked on the excellent Return to Rapture mod for Half-Life Alex. They're using everything they learned from developing that mod to make their very own game coming to both Quest 2 and Quest 3 next year. 
The premise of Memoriam is that you're humanity's last hope on a colony ship in space where something has gone terribly wrong. It's dark, it's claustrophobic, it has jump scares, and it has these monsters lurking in the shadows. In the demo, I had an SMG, a shotgun, and a pistol at my disposal to take out some of these horrible monsters. And this is all with full manual reloads. The demo had a little bit of exploration, which was a nice way to build up the tension, and it also had some nice climbing sections to break up the combat. This is really impressive, especially from such a small indie team. It was an absolute blast to play through their demo. It's still very early days for this one, but Memoriam is definitely one worth having on your radar. Moving from the shadows of a spooky ship floating in space to the shadowy streets of Venice, I got to check out the Vampire Masquerade Justice, a stealth action adventure game from the team at Fast Travel Games. I have to be honest, I've never played a Vampire Masquerade game before, so I wasn't quite sure what to expect going in, but I left the demo with strong Dishonored vibes, so if you're familiar with that game, Vampire will likely be right up your street. In the game, you of course play as a vampire, where your mission is to find those responsible for murdering your sire, and bring them to justice by using any means necessary. In the demo, I had access to a wrist-mounted crossbow that I could use to subdue enemies from a distance, to allow me to get in close for the kill. What I really liked is that once you do get up close, you can grab enemies, pull them in and bite their necks to drink their blood. This reduces your blood hunger meter, which then allows you to use a bunch of different abilities, such as being able to go invisible for a short amount of time or to lay traps to pick off enemies one by one. The really cool thing is that if you're running low on blood, but it's maybe a bit too risky to take on an enemy without alerting others, you can just pick up a rat from the street and drink their blood to give you a small boost. There was a lot to manage in the demo, which to be honest, I found quite challenging. So I'm looking forward to playing more at home and spending some time to understand how these abilities are best used when approaching various situations in the game. Overall, I was left impressed with the art style and the stealthy gameplay. The game will be launching on Quest 2, Quest 3, and PSVR 2 on the 2nd of November. Also, whilst at the Fast Travel Games booth, I did get to play an early prototype of a fun new multiplayer game that they're working on. It was really intense and I've never played anything else quite like it, and more information on this game will be coming very soon. And last, but by no means least, I got to check out an upcoming VR mech game in development called Big Shots. I played this cross-platform co-op with Gamertag VR, with me on PlayStation VR 2, and him playing on Quest 2. We each had our own hulking mechs, armed with various weaponry to take on hordes of alien creatures. The interactive elements and the detail in the cockpit were great, and everything had this cool Borderlands cel-shaded art style. It's funny, the game kind of reminded me of an episode of Love, Death and Robots called Suits, which featured these mech farmers taking on an alien invasion. When I mentioned this to the developers, they actually said that the episode was a big inspiration for the game, which is really awesome to hear. It's still early days for this one, and I'm hoping they can add a bit more to it before it launches early next year for Quest 2, Quest 3, PSVR 2, and PC VR headsets via Steam. So that's my roundup of VR content that I tried at Gamescom this year. I have to say the VR presence felt much smaller this year than previous years, but it was awesome to meet all these amazing developers showing off their upcoming VR games. What was disappointing was that we didn't see any of the big players on the show floor, like Meta, Pico, or PlayStation. With over 300,000 avid gamers attending the show, Gamescom would have been a great opportunity to demo VR to thousands of potential customers. As we all know, it's difficult to understand the magic of VR without actually trying it for yourself, so getting these gamers into headsets is really important for this industry to grow, so that felt like a big missed opportunity. But as always, I met some wonderful people and had a great time, and no doubt I'll be back at Gamescom again next year. Leave a cheeky little like if you enjoyed this roundup video, make sure you're subscribed for all my future VR content, and as always, I'll see you all on the next one. Cheers.